Once again, this is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy. Okay, Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, rise Israel. Okay, once again, this is Brother Brandon Judah Matt Duffy, and the topic on today would be basically talking about Esau. Okay, Esau, which is Edom, the white man, the so-called white man. Okay, he will not be saved. Okay, the so-called white man will not be saved. The white race will not be saved. And this is not concerning racism, okay? This is not dominating the white race or coming down on the white race and or, or just uh, disrespecting the, the white race in any way. Utilizing the white race. This is not concerning that. This just is the truth, man. And I'm going to show you today that the so-called white man, the white race, the Edomites, the children of Esau, they cannot be saved, according to the Bible. But they have not taught us the truth in America, and you will know the truth. Let's look at um, the nations, the table of nations, all right? Okay. We went over this already concerning the table of nations in the previous video on the standing John 3.16. So we don't need to go over this anymore, but I'll reiterate it just for the fact. It's, okay, number one, Israel. Okay, these are the children of God, okay? These are the children of God, the 12 tribes of Israel. Who are the 12 tribes of Israel? Let's flip it around. Bear along with me. I don't have a camera on the tripod, so... The 12 tribes of Israel is Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, okay? They are the 12 tribes of Israel today. And they are the children of God, not any other nation, okay? So we went over that. We went over that concerning understanding John 3.16 in the previous video, okay? So uh, flip the list back over again. And from 2 to 18, these are not the children of God. They are Gentile. They are hedonistic nations. All right? But when Christ returns to set up his kingdom, from 2 to 18, these nations will go into slavery for a thousand years. Okay? So from 2 to 18, these nations will go into slavery for a thousand years. Okay? They will go as slaves under the 12 tribes of Israel for a thousand years. Why? Because these nations from 2 to 18, they oppress the children of Israel and they critically brutalized and oppressed the children of Israel and, and, and sold them into slavery. So um, they were going to slavery, okay? From 2 to 18, these nations will go into slavery, okay, for a thousand years. But after those thousand, but after those thousand years have expired, the only nation that will not go back into it into its respective place is the nation of Edom, the Edomites, the white man, the white race. After those thousand years, they will not go back into their respective land. Judah will inhabit their land. All the other nation gets to go back into their respected land. The only the only nation that will not go back into their respected places after those thousand years have expired is the nation of Edom. Okay, they will be destroyed. They will totally be wiped out out the face of the globe. Okay, and we're gonna give you that. Um, the son the Holy Bible. We coming from the King James version. Okay, so let's go into the book of Jeremiah. I want to go into the book of Jeremiah chapter thirty, and I want to show you this. All right. Uh, let's look at 30 and 15. So that's Jeremiah chapter 30 and 15. I don't know if you can see this or not, but perhaps I need to probably get a bigger Bible. So I'm going to this bigger Bible. Let's go to Jeremiah 30 and 15. And I'm just going to show you that how all these nations from 2 to 18 will go into slavery. They will go in servitude. And they will serve 
the nation of Israel for all the oppression and hell they have brought upon the children of Israel. It says, uh, Why criest thou for thy affliction? Thy sorrow is uncurable for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done things, I have done these things unto thee. The reason why the Most High said that because he brought hell on the children of Israel for breaking his law, statutes, and commandments. He appointed these nations. He appointed these nations to rule over them. All right, let's look at verse uh, 16 out of Jeremiah and 30. It says, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thy adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for prey. So you can see concerning Jeremiah 30 and 16, it says, Therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. Who devoured us, man? Who devoured us? It was from 2 to 18, y'all. Okay? These heathenistic Gentile nations that took us into slavery, captivity, and oppression. Let's go back. So all they that devour thee, it says, therefore all they that devour thee shall be devoured. The same thing that from 2 to 18, the same thing they done to the children of Israel, we going to do to them. That's why it says in Galatians 6 and 7, do not be mocked for whatsoever man so shall he reap, y'all. Okay? Let's go back. Jeremiah 30 and 16, it says, and all thy adversaries. The adversaries is from 2 to 18. Those are the enemies of the 12 tribes of Israel. From 2 to 18, okay, those are the adversaries, the enemies of the children of Israel, okay? The white man is our enemy. The East Indians is our Indian. The Asherites and all these other nations, Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, those are our enemies. And I'm going to prove that as well. So it says, all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. Okay, so I'm just letting you know that these nations are going into captivity, y'all. These Gentile nations that came against Israel is going into captivity. Okay, like I say, for a thousand years, but after that thousand years have aspired, the only nation that will not go back into their respective places is the nation of Edom. He would be totally destroyed. He would, not, he would not be even in remembrance anymore. Judah will inhabit his land while he will be totally destroyed. The white race will be totally wiped out. All the other nations will be back into their respective places. We're going to get that. All right. So how do we know primarily that from 2 to 18 is the enemies of Israel, which is number one? How do we know from 2 to 18 those are the enemies against the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians? I'm going to show you in Psalms 83, okay? I'm going to show you in Psalms 83. So we're going to Psalms 83. Just bear along with me. This is what David said in the Psalm 83. It says, Keep not thy silence. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm going to read it. This is Psalm 83. Keep not thy silence, O Most High. Hold not thy peace, and be not still. He said, Do not keep silent on these nations for what they have done to us. Do not hold thy peace on what these nations for what they have done to us, and do not be still. Get up and do something. Because David he demands to see justice from the Most High. He demands to see justice carry out on these other nations for what they have done to the nation of Israel. Okay? So it says, For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So when he says thy enemies, he's talking about the white man, Indians, the East Indians, Asherites, Syrians, 
the Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, Ethiopians, Egyptians, North Africans, South Africans, the people of Turkey, Russians, Greeks, Germans, Spanish, and Cyprus. Those are the enemies that came against the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Okay, that's what he's talking about when he says in Psalms 83 and 2, For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. Okay, verse 3, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. So when it says they have taken crafty counsel, that means they have plotted wicked schemes against the nation of Israel. Okay. And against thy people. See, it says they have taken crowd the council against thy people. That means your people. Who is the people of God? The 12 tribes of Israel, y'all. Okay? The people of God is the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians. The 12 tribes of Israel. That's what he's talking about when he says thy people. He's talking about the children of God. That these other enemies from 2 to 18 came against. Okay? All right, so they taken crafty the counsel. We still in Psalms eighty three and verse three. They have taken crafty the counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. When it says they have consulted against thy hidden ones, that means reason why we are considered hidden ones today because we are considered as the lost tribes of Israel. We don't know who we are as the people. We have forgotten our nationality. We discontinued from our heritage. Concerning the book of Jeremiah, I want to say um, uh, 17 and 4. I could be wrong. <laughs> Children of Israel were discontinued from their heritage, not knowing who they were in the last days. And that's why it says, consulted against thy hidden ones, because we seem hidden in the earth. Because we are the lost tribes of Israel. Okay. Verse 4. It says. They have said come. And let us cut them off from being a nation. So when it said they have said. It's talking about. Two down to 18. The so called white man. The Arabs. The Africans. And the Asiatic people. And all the other nine. All the other nine. Hebrew people that are not Israelites. Okay. From 2 to 18, they the one that said, come and let us cut them off, okay? Let's go back to Psalms 83 and 4, all right? They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And the reason why it says they wanted to, they wanted to put the name of Israel out of existence, they wanted to cut that name off. That's why it says that, they said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And truth be told, as we speak today, the name of Israel is no more in remembrance, okay? Because we don't even know we're the children. Most Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians don't even know they are the children of Israel. And that's why that name is no more in remembrance because they have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Like the verse said, how? How did they take crafty counsel? By telling Negroes that they was African Americans, okay? By telling the uh by telling Negroes that they are they are African Americans and not Jews. This is crop the council, okay? Take a look at the list. Crop the council is basically when our oppressors, our enemies, took us into slavery and gave us the name Negro, Negro. They didn't tell us that we was the Judites. Okay, that's crop the council. When you don't tell the people who they are, okay? They didn't tell the Ephraimites that they was Puerto Ricans. Neither did they tell the Manasserites that they was Cubans. The Benjamites, they didn't never tell them that they were Jamaicans. The Issacharites, they never told them that they was... They never they never told uh, the Mexicans that they was Issacharites. They never told the Jamaicans that they was Benjamites. They never told the Cubanos, the Cubans, that they was Manasserites. And so, and so forth. You see, this is crafty counsel because all of these names are our biblical names, but our enemies put these bywords and proverbs on us to to uh, isolate us from our biblical name, so we wouldn't know who we were in the last days. So we grew up. So Negroes in America grew up thinking that they are Negroes. 
when you find out, according to the Bible, when you find out the truth, you're going to find out that the Negroes are actually the Jews. They should have gave us these names from the get-go. But they took away these names and gave us Proverbs by words to isolate and keep us separated. So that the name of Israel will, will be no more in remembrance. And that's crafty counsel, y'all. And who did this? Who did this to us? It's going to explain. The so-called white man did this to us from 2 to 18. They did this to us. And other nations that are not Israelites. I'm going to show you. All right. Let's look at five. We still in Psalms 83, verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So it says they consulted together with one, one consent. From 2 to 18, all these nations came together and consulted together with one agreement to take down the nation of Israel, which is number one. All right. Let's go back. Let's look at verse 6. Now it's going to, it's going to explain who are the people that did this to the children of Israel? The tabernacles of Edom. Okay? Edom is the so-called white man. Okay? So he done that. Let's go back. It says the Ishmaelites. Let's go up. The Ishmaelites, okay, are the Arabs. Ishmael. The father of the Arabs. So the Arabs did this as well. Okay? Okay. Let's go back. It says of Moab. Okay? Let's go back up. The Chinese, Moab. So the Chinese did it. So, so far, the white man had his hand in it. Okay. All right. The Arabs had their hand in it. The Moabites, which are the Chinese, had their hands in it. Okay. It says, in the Hargarines, those are Africans. Gibal, those are another set of Africans. Amen. Let's go back up. So, Ammonites are Japanese. So, the Japanese had their hands in it. Okay. Let's go to, uh, it says, uh, an Amalek. Amalek. Amalek is basically the so-called Khazarians in the land of Palestine, Israel, claiming they are the real Jews. So, I would say those, those are the so-called white people today. The Amalekites, they had their hands in it. All right. Um, uh, we we in Psalms 83, verse 7. The Amalekites had their hands in it. The Philistines, those are Africans. It says, with the inhabitants of Tyre, those are another set of Africans. Asher, those are the Assyrians. See, the Asherites, the Assyrians had their hands in it. All right, also is joined with them. They have hope into the children of Lot. And the children of Lot is basically Moab and Amon, which are Chinese and Japanese that we already went over. So they are the ones that took crafty counsel against number one, which is the nation of Israel. They are the ones that took crafty counsel against the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians, y'all. So that's why I was telling you that they will receive a penalty for doing that. What is that penalty? That penalty is slavery. That penalty is a hundred thousand years, well, a thousand years of slavery. We're going to prove that. So from 2 to 18, y'all, these nations going into slavery when Christ come back to set his kingdom up on the earth. All right? But after those thousand years, the white man, the white race would totally be wiped out. All the other nations would go back to their respective places. We're going to get that. All right. This is why they have to go into slavery for what they have did. That's why they have to go into slavery according to Psalms 83 for taking crap to counsel against the Most High's people. That's why they have to serve their slavery. Okay. And I'm going to show you this. Let's go to Revelation 13. I want to say. 
And we're going to be, begin, this is Revelation, as you can see, Revelation, we beginning with chapter 13, we're going to start from the ninth verse. It says, if, if any man have an ear, let him hear. Now, it's not talking about physical ears in this context, okay? It's not talking about physical ears because everyone has ears. So when it says, if any man have an ear, let him hear, it's talking about understanding. If any man have some sort of sense of understanding, let him understand the scripture in this, in this context and what this verse is talking about, okay? It says in verse 10 out of Revelation 13, it says, He that leadeth in captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. So it says, He that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. My question is to you is, who led the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Indians into captivity? Who led the so-called Negroes on cargo slave ships to the Western Hemisphere in captivity? It was the so-called white man, y'all. All right? So therefore, he's going into captivity. And like the Spaniards, the Spaniards down here, 17, which is Tarshish, the Spaniards led the Indian tribes into captivity by taking the native Indians back to Spain. Okay, so they, they were also going to captivity, okay? And we already know about the Ethiopians, which are the Babylonians. They took Israel as captives. The Egyptians had Israel as captives when Moses rescued the um, Israelites from the hands of the Egyptians. The North African, all these African nations, they had Israel as captives, all right? The Arabs... They sold the Israelites to the Greeks, according to Joel, the third chapter. All right? So all of these nations, man, they, they brought Israel into slavery. Therefore, they were going to captivity. Okay? But after those thousand years, I'm going to keep repeating this. After those thousand years of slavery, the white man would totally be destroyed while all the other nations go back to their respective places. Okay, we're going to get that. So we're going into the book of Isaiah 14. Let's look at Isaiah 14. It says, For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Those strangers are talking about other nations of Israel that don't know they are the Israelites. Right? They shall be joined with them. Okay? It says, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. All right, so these strangers right here are Israelite Gentiles. Basically, primarily Israelites that was calling themselves other nations of names. Names of other nations. Those, it says, the strangers shall be joined with them. They shall cleave to the house of Jacob. It says, and the people, which are the Israelites, shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Most High for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. See? So we shall take them captives who captives we were, because we are captives to the white man as we speak today. He's the one ruling over us. So when Christ comes and returns and set up his kingdom, we will take them into slavery, okay? That's why he said in Mark 10 and 31, 
that many of first shall be last and the last shall be first, okay? Now, let's get this concerning that after those thousand years of slavery, that the Edomites, they won't go back to their respective places. I'm going to show you that these nations are going to serve a thousand years first, and then we'll get that second. So we're going into Revelation chapter 20. All right? Now, let's look at Revelation 20 and 5. It said, But the rest of the dead, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So the rest of the dead that live not is the other nations, okay? Why? It says that they live not again until the thousand years were finished. Because during those thousand years, these nations from 2 to 18 would be serving slavery. But after those thousand years, they will live again. Okay? But the only person that would not live after those thousand years again is the nation of Edom, the so-called white race. They would be destroyed. How do we know that? I'm going to show you this, okay? Let's go to the book of Obadiah. We are going into the book of Obadiah to show you that after those thousand years of slavery, that all nations will return back to their places, but Esau will be destroyed, okay? Okay, brothers and sisters, we are in the book of Obadiah, okay? And we are going to explain after those thousand years, Esau will be destroyed, okay? But all the other nations will go back to their respective places, okay? So, Obadiah is concerning uh, prophecies of Edom. It's, it's basically showing you the characteristics of Esau, the white race, the Edomites, okay? So, let's get into it, all right? Let's go straight to the point where it says that Esau will not, after those thousand years, be spared, okay? Let's see where we can find this at. Uh, let's look at Obadiah verse 15. It says, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. And these are the other nations from 2 to 18. Okay? It says, As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. That's the precept to Galatians 6 and 7 when it says do not be marked whatsoever man so it shall you also read there's also the precept to revelation 13 um and 10 when it says he that leadeth in captivity shall go into captivity that's why i said as it as thou hast done it shall be done unto thee thou reward shall return upon thy own head okay verse 16 we in obadiah it says, For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. So the holy mountain was the Israelites, okay? That they drunk upon. Basically put their foot on and oppressed. Okay? It says, So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah, they shall drink and they shall swallow down. And they shall be as dough they had not been. Because why it says that in Obadiah 16? Why it says that? Because it says they, have, they shall be as though they have not been. Because they have treated us as though we have not been. Okay? They have stolen our identity. They have distorted history. They, they have not told us who we are as a people. And they have, they have taken um, identity theft. The, the Israelis over in the Middle East, they say they are the children of God. They say they are the real Jews, and they have not told us who we are as the people, okay? So they have basically treated us as though we have not been. So when this time comes, they will receive the same we are. They will be treated as though they have not been. Because after we finish putting this damn slavery on these nations, let me tell you something. After we finish putting this slavery on from 2 to 18, after we finish whooping the hell out of them with the slavery, just how they did us, it's going to seem as though they, don't, they, they didn't never even have any power. Because the white man seems so in, the, invincible right now. Okay? He seems so, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? He seems so powerful right now. But after we finish whooping him with this slavery, he going to be as though he never been. All right? All praise is due to the Most High, man, in the name of Ahia, by Hashem, Yeshaya, a.k.a. Yahweh Shai. We are longing for this day to come, okay? 
Verse 17, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob, the Israelites, shall possess their possessions. See that? So we're going to possess their possessions. Okay? And the house of Jacob, this is verse 18 out of Obadiah. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. Those are Israelites. But it says the house of Esau for stubble. They shall kindle in them and devour them. This is after that thousand year period, y'all. Okay? This is after the thousand years. After Esau has served this thousand years of slavery. It says. Let's go back to 18 on the Obadiah. And the house of Jacob shall possess. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of. And the house of. Of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them. And devour them. So they is going to be burnt up. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the most have has spoken it. Okay. Because reason why it says there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. Because after those thousand years of slavery. Esau is totally going to be destroyed. He's going to be demolished. He's going to be wiped out. There will be no more Edomites lingering around anymore. Okay? There will be no more white race totally. You can get mad and get worked up and take this as his race, as his racial comments, but this is what the Bible says. Alright? This is not something I said. This is what the Bible says. Alright? Because truth be told that the Edomites. Okay, all nations really, all nations have pigment of color. All these nations have pigment of color. The only nations out of these 18 table of nations that do not have, that does not have pigment is Esau, the Edomite, the so-called white man, because the Most High cursed them by stripping the pigment from his skin, okay? That was a curse that they was born without any pigment in their skin, all right? All right? So, after those thousand years, there will not be any remaining of the house of Esau left. Okay? We're going to get some more precepts concerning that. How do we know that? We can get some more precepts concerning that. You can just hold on. You got questions? We have answers. So, let's get some more concerning that. It mentions Lucifer in Isaiah chapter 14. That's not Satan, okay? Lucifer is not Satan. Satan is a spiritual demon. Lucifer is the Illuminati, okay, that the Bible speaks of in uh, chapter 14. The Luciferians, the illuminated ones, the holders of the light. When you look at Lucifer in Hebrew, the real term for Lucifer in Hebrew is Hallel. Hallel in Hebrew, it means the light barrier, okay? So these illuminated ones, which are the 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati, they bear light to the nations. And that's exactly why... They put the flame of intelligence in the Statue of Liberty hands. In New York, okay? So these white races of people is called the Illuminati that's ruling this government and controlling this earth. And they're called Luciferians. So this is what Isaiah talks about as Lucifer in Isaiah chapter 14 when it says how, how has thou fallen from heaven. Isaiah chapter 14 is a future prophecy, okay? And it has not came to pass yet. So when it says Lucifer, how has thou fallen from heaven, that means when that time comes that the Luciferians, which are the Edomites, they will fall from their rulership because heaven actually means rulership. So when it says Lucifer, how has thou fallen from heaven, when Christ returns to set, set up his kingdom on the earth, okay, these Illuminati bloodlines and these, these Edomites that is, that is in a high position, they will fall from their rulership. They will fall from heaven. Okay, these Luciferians, they will fall from heaven and they will go into the state of captivity. How we know that? We're going to show you this. All right, so let's get straight into it. This is Isaiah, Isaiah 
chapter 14, and I'm going to show you this. All right? Okay, so let's look at... Uh, Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 14 and 12. Okay? It says, How art thou, Lucifer, fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? See, it says, How, how art thou, Father, from heaven? This is not happening yet because Isaiah chapter 14 it's a future. It's a future event. This is future prophecy that would come to pass when Christ returns to set up His kingdom on the earth. Then Lucifer, which are the Luciferians, the Satan is the Illuminati, the, the enlightened ones. They are called sons of the morning. Why? Because they they are holders of the light. They claim that they know things that the media does not know. They claim that they are intelligent people, and that's why on the back of your dollar bill you will see. That the pyramid has the all seeing eye on the top and it has the light. It has light that is illuminating around it. It represents the enlightened ones, the Illuminati, the Luciferians, holders of the light. It says, verse 13, For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. Okay? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. We're not going to go over all this because you can see a video that I posted up on YouTube. And the title of the video is basically Lucifer is not Satan or Satan is not Lucifer. Look into that and this will explain. Um, this will go into more detail. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into all of these verses. But let's skip down. It says, verse 15 out of Isaiah 14. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. So what it's talking about? That these Luciferians, this so-called white race, these white people... That are thinking that they are in total control of the government and ruling the earth. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. Hell means captivity. It's not a literal place where you burn. Okay, it means a position of oppression and slavery. So at that time when Christ returns, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. The white man will go into captivity. Okay, like we spoke on these nations serving their slavery for a thousand years. The white man will go into captivity and be brought down to the sides of the pit. Okay? Now, let's go down. Let's look at uh, verse 18 out of Isaiah 14. It says, All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. Now, this is talking about the so-called white man. All right? It says, but Isaiah 14 and 19, it says, But thou art cast out. Of thy grave like an abominable branch. Thou art cast out. As the raiment. Of those that are slain. Thrust through with the sword. That go down to the stones of the pit. As the carcass is trodden on the foot. Now look at verse 20. Verse 19 in Isaiah 14. Told you that the white man. It says thou art cast out the grave. Like an abominable branch. Now that grave. Refers back. To Revelation chapter 20 when we were talking about the rest of the dead did not live until after the thousand years were expired the rest of the dead did not live that's what that grave symbolized in Isaiah 14 and 19 it says but thou art cast out of thy grave okay so after the thousand years the white man would be cast out he would be destroyed he would not go back to his respective places like all the other nations he would be cast out like an abominable branch. Let's look at verse 20 out of Isaiah 14. It says, Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial. Joined with who? Thou shalt not be joined with the other nations. The white man would not be joined with these other nations after those thousand years of slavery. He would be destroyed. And, the land of, and, and Judah will inhabit the land of Edom. We're going to get that as well. It says, Because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people, the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. So they're going to be totally wiped out and destroyed, y'all. Okay? All right. So how do we know that Judah will possess the land of Edom after they be totally destroyed? Let's go back to Obadiah. We're going back to Obadiah. I'm just letting you know there's no deliverance for the so-called white man. All right? There's no mercy for him. 
We're going back to Obadiah, and I'm going to show you who's going to inhabit the land of Edom after he's destroyed. Okay. Now, we spoke about the house of Esau for stubble, that they shall kindle in them and devour them, and they shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Most High has spoken it. Now, Obadiah, verse 19, it says, And they of the south shall possess the Mount of Esau. They of the south is Judah. They of the south shall possess the Mount of Esau. Why would the Judahites be possessing the Mount of Esau? Okay, because Esau is going to be destroyed, and he will not go back to his respective places because Judah would possess his land just, because, just like the Edomites, as we speak today, is possessing our land which is Jerusalem, okay? So that's what it's talking about, all right? They are the south shall possess the Mount of Esau. The Judites will get that land of Edom, all right? So let's look at something else, man. Um, so I'm basically explaining that, hey, all nations are going into slavery for what they did to the children of Israel. But after those thousand years, there's no hope for the so-called white man. He's going to be totally destroyed. Okay? Totally destroyed. All right? Let's get some more discernment. Um, how do we know that these nations, after a thousand years, would go back into their respective places? The only one that's not going back into their respective places is number two, which is the white man. From three down to 18, they will go back into their respective places. The white man, no hope. Okay, how we know that? I'm going to give you Isaiah 2, chapter 2. So we're going to Isaiah 2 to let you see, after those thousand years of slavery, that those other nations will go back to their respective places. Isaiah 2. I know this is a long lesson, y'all, but just get your pens and your pads and take notes and be proud, y'all, that you're being edified, man, because you're not going to find this in too many places around here, man, especially not these churches. They're not telling you the truth anyway. They're more concerned with money. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 2, and it's explaining how these nations will go back into their respective places, but Esau will not get his respective place back. He will be destroyed, and Judah will inhabit the land of Esau. All right, let's look at Isaiah chapter 2. It says, The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. This is Isaiah chapter 2 and 1. Now we, are on, now we are on Isaiah chapter 2 and 2. It says, It shall come to pass in the last days that the, mount, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Okay? Concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass... In those last days that the mount that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. So the mountains of the Lord's house are the children of Israel, okay? Those are the children of Israel, all right? Okay, so we're going to continue to read. It says in Isaiah chapter 2, it says, The mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills. When it says it shall be exalted above the hills, it's talking about that exalted above all nations. All right? The Israelites will be exalted above all these other heathenistic nations. All right? And it says, exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. And these are the Gentiles, the heathenistic nations. And many people shall go and say, come. Ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house, to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways. He's talking about the other nations that, that will return back to their respective places. He will teach us his ways, it says, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. So even in the land of Zion, even in Zion, the law is going to be going forth. So how come these churches telling you that we are not under the law today? They say we're not under the law, we're under grace. But shall we, shall we continue in grace that grace may abound? God forbid, according to Romans 6. 
So what I'm telling you, if the law is going, if the law is going to go forth in Zion, then it's impossible for these churches to tell you that we're not under the law. Okay? It said it shall go forth in Zion, go forth the law and the word of the Most High from Jerusalem. So what I'm telling you, man, that's why I say that the when it says um according to Isaiah chapter two, when it it, it was basically saying. Out of Isaiah 2 and 3, and many people shall go and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. He would teach us his ways, because in those days that Israel, Israel in those days, would be teaching these other nations their ways. But they won't be teaching the so-called white man. Why? Because the so-called white man is going to be off the face of the earth and no more in remembrance. Okay? No more in remembrance. And it's just as simple as it gets, y'all. It's just as simple as it gets. I want to close out with this. This is one more scripture I want to close out with. Let's go to Zechariah. We're going to Zechariah, and I want to say Zechariah 14, and we're going to begin with 16. That's Zechariah 14 and 16. All right? Zechariah 14 and 16. It says, And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all nations. Why does it say that in Zechariah 14 and 16? It shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all nations. Because the only nation of people that is not going to be left after those thousand years of slavery is the so-called white man, which is number two. They is going to be destroyed. They are going to be totally wiped out. Okay, that's why it says in Zechariah 14, 16, and it shall come to pass that everyone left, that is left of all the nations, which came against Jerusalem, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king of the Lord of hosts and keep the feast of tabernacles, all right? It says, and it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all families of the earth, that means all nations of the earth, the 18 nations, every nation, okay? And to Jerusalem to worship the king of the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain, okay? And it says, and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith the Most High will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. So these other nations, man, if they don't want to get with the program in the last days, if they don't want to keep these holy days, and they don't want to be subjected under the house of Israel, if they don't want to get with the program, they will be destroyed, man. But let's not forget, it says, Zechariah 14 and 16, it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations. Let's not forget, we won't have to worry about the damn so-called white man anymore because he's not going to be around at all. For Jacob to teach, uh, teach him his ways, he's going to be destroyed. So with that, Brothers and sisters, I hope you were edified. This is Brother Brandon Judah McDuffie, and I wanted to break that down because we had a lot of camps, a lot of people out here that are saying that the white man has hope after those thousand years, but he does not have hope. We showed you, according to the Bible, Isaiah 28 and 10, for it says, precept must be upon precept, line by line, here a little and there a little. That's how you get proper understanding of the Bible. Now you know for yourself that the white man has no chance, none whatsoever. The only thing that lies up for him is a hundred years of slavery, and after that, destruction. Shalom, rise Israel.